Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So recently we built this new diatone frame on the channel and you know everyone's waiting for their maiden, official maiden, and I finally maidened it and I'm here to discuss with you what I have found and what happened in crashes and what I believe about this overall setup. Now I've made a previous video on this about the motors. The motors are absolutely insane. Um, I've never flown really a motor with so much thrust and at the same time to have, you know, the battery to be able to withstand it. So it's kind of like efficient thrust. It's weird. I can't explain it. But it just flies beautiful. Now, I have never flown a quad that flew like this in my entire life out of all the builds I've done. It was just absolutely insane, and it just performed and performed and performed. However, there are drawbacks, and I'll get into that right now. But what I want to do is, because this performed so amazing, it just literally just dropped my jaws. What I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and purchase every single component again and build another one. Because I want to see if it'll perform the same. Because if it performs the same... This will be a base template, or I will I will make this as a base template for everyone because this is everything is just literally stock except the rates. And it was just insanely beautiful. I, I just cannot explain it and I just I've never flown anything like it. However, it's pretty expensive and there are some drawbacks, and I'm gonna get into drawbacks right now. So that is my plan and my goal, because I believe this could be, or this is currently the perfect setup, but to prove it to myself, I want to get the exact same components and build another one, just to make sure everything is exactly the same. And if it flies absolutely beautiful, stock everything, everything, you know, just, it's just going to be an absolutely beautiful template of a perfect quad, a literally perfect quad. And, um... Yes, that's what I'm calling it, a perfect quad. That That's how good it was. And by far, this is my favorite quadcopter now. And it was always difficult for me to choose which quadcopter is good, but that's it. You know, I've made up my mind. There is no doubt in my mind. It's a clear winner. So now, I've gone ahead and reordered the parts. Actually, I haven't reordered them just yet. Hopefully, by the end of the week, I can. And I'm just going to have to wait for them to come in. And I'll do a rebuild of the same exact setup you see here. And we take it out and see if it performs exactly the same. And I have a good feeling it will, but time will tell. And if it does, then the second one will be up going for a giveaway. However, um, I'm pretty sure it will, but you know, we'll see as time goes on. That's one thing. Now let's talk about the drawbacks. Now I did have a couple hard crashes. <laughs> And the aluminum, well, Diatone's aluminum is not the good aluminum. I could tell you that right now. I've already stripped a screw, putting that side in. But to prove it even more, I mean, it's not very bad damage, but now I have something very annoying because of the crappy aluminum. So let me tell you what happened here. I've gotten to a pretty good crash, I must say. The motor's held up very good, so that's very good from T-Motor. Now, this here has gotten bent, as you can see right there. It's bent sideways, but that's fine. You could rebend it back. It's not a, it's not an issue. There we go. We're done. But that shows you how much of butter aluminum this is. And another thing which is very bad now is the screw that tightens these two together to stop this from moving has stripped away. So that's also something to take note of. However, with all this, you know, does this make this frame a piece of crap? Well, at the current moment of time, for me, it doesn't because I am really willing to replace the upper plate right now and I do not want to change a single component on this guy because I love it so much that um, it's a perfect quad for me. And that is why I want to go ahead and purchase everything all over again, do another build and see if it works out the same. And I'm also going to be purchasing a replacement part here. However, this is not a very good quality frame let's leave it at that but the overall feeling for me was so beautiful which is why i really do not want to change anything now if you build the second one it flew exactly the same that's super awesome then what i might do is i might take the internals and put them on another quad and see if it flies exactly the same or it's just something about this frame that's just very nice 
So let's go ahead and talk about some other components now. Now the frame, that's the biggest drawback of this whole setup. However, it did take a pretty nasty beating and it held up together pretty well, except the aluminum back here was absolute not good. Let's leave it at that word. Um, the camera, which is that cheap $20 um, like run cam micro camera that, that we, we have recently reviewed on the channel or just talked about on the channel, uh, was standing on the on the post 16 by 9. However, I was able to fly it perfect on 16 by 9 goggles and 4 by 3 goggles. And, you know, the weather was, was not a good weather. It had, like, little overcast every now and then. And it was performing absolutely beautiful. So this camera is a... I would consider it as a good camera. I don't want to say the best camera because I'm very limited in what I choose in cameras, but it's just, it performs just like any 600 TVL line, Foxy or XAT600 or Runcam Swift. So it performs good. It's perfect. I didn't have any weird issues like you would with the old CMOS type camera. So in the perspective of this camera, it's only 20 bucks. I highly recommend it. It works perfect. It's working absolutely beautiful. It worked on 4x3 and 16x9 goggles. I didn't have any issues. So I was able to fly on both. So there wasn't no weird distortion, which was good. So I really don't know if it's 16x9 or 4x3. And it just works on both goggles. I can tell you that right now. The AKK um, VTX here. It's good. I mean, I really can't say much. I didn't do anything. Um, I didn't fly far. I didn't have any breakouts. I didn't have anything like just stupid happen. It just worked good. The board that I'm using is the Star F4S. Now, we didn't use the low ASR capacitor. I didn't have any noise. However, I did have some OSD flickers, but that is totally fine and totally be fixable with a tiny small low ASR capacitor since we don't have noise and it just kind of cleans out that OSD voltage and you should be good to go. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't bad at all. So, this board just constantly amazes me, you know. When I was flying, I was like, wait, what board do I have in there? Do I have the Asgard? Do I have, what, the, what, what board is in there, you know? And then, and then I remembered, uh, I have the Racer Star Star F4S and I'm just like, I, it just ceases to amaze me every single time. And it keeps the overall build clean and beautiful. For a receiver here, I'm just using the XM Plus to reduce weight, plus its size, and I can just stick it anywhere, and I don't fly far. Motors, absolutely beautiful. These are the type of motors that I would highly recommend for a full price or a premium price, which are $20 or $25. Um, you know, th th these are well worth their $20, $25 bucks so far. And um, as time goes on, I'll keep updating you if they break, if something happens, if one burns out. All that will be in update videos. And um, for, that's really it. That's all the components in here. So overall, this thing was absolute beauty. Um, I, d I cannot complain about anything. I'm, this is actually my favorite quad now. And, um, and I'm just going to leave it at that because I'm just going to keep repeating myself now. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the FPV footage. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.